quiet seaside town, an evil lain to rest centuries ago, has risen. An abandoned fortress deep in the swamp holds a secret that could save the village or destroy it. Now, a band of adventurers sets out to dig up the wounds of the past and bring the light of day to the roots of ruin. This is Tabletop Gold. Hello, friends, and welcome to Tabletop Gold, episode 102. That's 23 Ooh. times four. Ooh. No, probably not. My name is Lars Castine, the uh, Golden Tyrant, and you're going to delight in the dramatic performance of a tabletop role playing game tonight. But what is a performance without perform more? Perform mores. Perform, perform, Perfuermos. It's Armad Humphreys. Oh, hello. Good evening. Good that time. Good that time. Zoe Chernikov is also here. Good that time, fellow performers. Good that time. David Chernikov is here. <laughs> Good that time. Uh, it appears that uh, 102 is 23 times 4.434782608695652. My or God. Wouldn't it just be 20? 20- Five point two twenty times four. Yep. <laughs> we don't care about twenty seven point five. Yeah. I don't have a I don't have a fetish about that number, Robin. Robin Lang is here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes. Hello. Um, back with the with the smooth jazz voice. Too. Back smooth in jazz. the velvet zone tonight. Love it. Yeah, I don't love it. Where, it that means that right now. That means that you're have you have a, a bit of a headache tonight, which is which is unfortunate. I'm I'm sorry to, they, to hear about uh, that. Yeah, they. I don't know why, but for the last week and a half, they've only been coming on our recording nights. It seems, and <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe you're it's allergic to devils. Oh, that could be it. Or flesh maybe warping. They, maybe I'm just D- have you like ever done one of those out. skin tests where they test everything? Did they do devils? No, I never have actually. My my allergies have never been bad enough to do an aller- one of those allergy panels. Yeah. Let's go to so a what, what do you think they would? So what would they test for devils? Do you think like would it be devil's blood on my skin? I think it would be a red hot. They just rub a little bit of a red oh, hot. I like the, red the candy or the hot sauce. Yep. De- uh, wouldn't that just say? Okay. Wouldn't that I'll just say whether or not I was allergic to artificial cinnamon? No, it's the devil's candy. They, they make it from devils. Yeah, it's, well, it's a, well, no, it's more like the sort of uh, aura of devils. Ah, <laughs> the diabolical tracks, yeah. aura of <laughs> yeah. of world famous red you hot. You guys candies. have tasted red hot, so you can tell me I'm wrong. No, I would never. I would I mean, never do I, that. I would more so <laughs> argue that a mix of okra and cilantro are the devil's food. Oh, interesting. You're an anti cilantroist. I don't love cilantro, and I really don't love okra. Uh, can we start with cilantro? Yeah. Are you Robin Lang, or are you? Have you ever been a super taster? Is that what we're learning now? Because that's what I they say: cilantro. So. If it tastes like soap to you, you have a gene. They no. call it super tasting. No, it's not soapy. It's just bad. Hmm. Bad in <laughs> what? In what? In what like, way? Like it's, deliciousness. It's fresh, crispy taste. Yeah. It's it's almost no. It tastes like slightly bitter to me. Mm. And it like it hits me in my olf- olfactory center, I guess, in a way that like mm-hmm. literally makes my head like shake. Like I get it, I get the oh, this no. like like shiver, like when it when a no. cat, like well, we, yeah, don't eat that. When, yeah, you okay. see, like, a, when, when like a dog kind of does that shake, that's Is like my response to thing? eating. I, I it's funny. I'm fine with most textural things. Like I love seaweed salad things like that. But there's something about the texture of okra. And maybe it's because my mother made me. Um, tried to force me to eat it too often when I was little that I just, it grosses me out. I can't do it. No, no amount of like sauteing or like a fried okra isn't going to do Honestly, it for you. Honestly, I'm, I'm at the point in my life 
where that is like <laughs> the only food that I will still say, I can't be bothered. Like, That's I'm not fair. even going to try it. I am so open to so many different questions. I'm so open to so many different foods. And that's the one thing I was like, you know, I'm open to a lot of things. I can still hate okra just for the sake of it. It's a relatively safe thing to hate. It doesn't wind up in the part of the country that we live in. It does not wind up in food really all that often. Yeah. my And my dad, I get it. My dad and I both dislike okra and cilantro. So I think there is something slightly genetic there. I find it pretty offensive that in last okay. week's food discussed quiz, there was no ninth category for okra. So we had to take a, we needed a second episode. Yeah, we, we had to you do guys are taking a bold stand against uh, okra tonight. And I'm here for it. Okra's had know, my, its time. My southern sun. grandmother oh, is I rolling like over in her grave. I do too. You're, I'm sorry, Robin, what did you say? Your, your, your southern grandma? My southern grandma, oh. my Mississippi grandma is rolling over in her grave hearing me say how much I just like okra. Is that your that's dad's why mom? my mother cooks it. No, it's my mom's. That's why my mom cooks so my mom's Did mom you call her southern. Mississippi Gran? I mean, that's how I refer to her. She okay. was my only okay. grandma, so she was just All grandma. Right. <laughs> my Mississippi grandma sounds like it could be a country a western hit. Yeah, Robin, are there any other foods that have that effect? The, the, the thing you're describing of where it like kind of sounds very physically yes. involving, like it almost touches your central nervous system off, like things just start. Uh, so it's not just cilantro. There are other ones. No, broccoli, Rob. What? Oh. Now I'm upset. <laughs> I love broccoli. Broccoli, Rob, literally, again, like that's one where I bite into it. I'm like, oh, God, why is How that about in broccolini? mouth? Broccolini is fine. It's the bitterness of broccoli, Rob. I don't like bit. That's the bitters, the flavor t- um, profile that I don't really like. Let's talk mustard greens. How do you feel about a mustard green? I'm okay with mustard All greens. All right. There's a line Escarole? here. Escarole? Mm. Oh, hate escarole. Hate Same. escarole. Okay. The escarole texture is more the issue for me, but my mother wants to put escarole in everything. Oh. Yeah, the, the texture is oh. the main issue for me, except for the main issue, which is how it tastes, which yeah. is bad. <laughs> Let's just do a little thought experiment. Imagine that you were on a Zoom call with somebody who didn't know what escarole was. How would you <laughs> yeah. explain it to them? <laughs> okay, Im- okay, I can do this. Imagine uh, something that looks exactly like lettuce. Okay, so far so good. But when you bite into it. Instead of what happening to you being like what happens when you bite into lettuce, which nothing. is basically nothing. Yeah. Instead, like the- what happens to you is the worst taste that you've ever t- tasted. It's like the most bitter thing. It's like biting into a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like how the Red Hots are the devil's food. Yeah. Radicchio is kind of like the devil just peed in your mouth. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that what people mean when they say the devil's lettuce? Yes. One hundred percent. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's yeah. SS Carol that they always meant with you the know, devil's lettuce. That really raises just a lot of questions. Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> Why do my hate thing that with so Carol is I feel like it has a little bit of like a soft hairy texture, which I think is actually a major food prop. Like I feel like the leaves are like a little bit so- like there's like a, a cilia on them. Like yeah. a, wait, like a terry cloth? Is that what you're saying? Like a it's like, like a very terry fine cloth? though. Like I, there's like a slight Kind of like dandelion greens. Yeah, hairy. which yeah, hairy. Okay. Um wh- of which my least favorite hairy fruit is apricots because why do we have a fruit that tastes like human skin? That's not an appropriate choice. Wait, Pick a different what? fruit. It tastes like human skin. Yes, the texture of apricots is like human skin. <laughs> I am finding it very satisfying that we created we that we reworked the d- the Discord channel last week. <laughs> yeah. The, to I, th- I believe we netted out on foot fight. Yeah, it's foot fight. Yes, um, foot fight yeah, is what right. it was. Of course, but that we we because we like I it, I would imagine that for most listeners they're like oh they decided to talk about uh, foods they don't like again right um but we didn't we a hundred percent no didn't. that just no. happened <laughs> oh yeah, just, yeah this was we were going to talk about gardening and that d- clearly did not happen but there's Maybe more next week. there's more um, unappetizing <laughs> juice to be <laughs> to be squeezed from these unpleasant food stuffs mm. I think what we're learning is that the devil has more than one kind of um lettuce yeah lettuce do you guys remember that part in Call Me by Your Name where that dude bangs an apricot isn't that weird. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it a peach? Is it because nope. it's not like human skin? <laughs> You're going to tell me that's because it's not like human skin that he that's does that. That's probably why he did it. That movie's okay, weird. First of all, s- spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> If you're wondering um, why they keep showing you an apricot tree through the beginning of that movie, it's because that's one of the main characters involved in the love triangle is is that tree. <laughs> wow. I never made that connection. 
I, this I, is great. I think <laughs> this, is I saw great. That. this is great. That was yeah, like the feel- second date movie we went to see. Oh, what? really? And your relationship survived? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we started with The Shape of Water. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. We only see weird cerebral romance fire. movies. <laughs> I think that if you see Probably Call Me By Your Name before the various cannibalism uh, like allegations came out about Army Hammer, then like oh, you're yeah. potentially seeing it in a better better light than contemporary oh, yeah, audiences no, I, I do. I can't watch that the same way now. <laughs> you know what else you can't watch the same way? Rats. Our reviews that come in for our podcast. Oh, I like those. Yeah, me too. This one I actually really, really like. This came in on Podcast Addict from a user named Squeamy Beavers. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> um, they Speaking say of swarms. <laughs> yes. Be- oh, well, stay tuned. They say uh, cast is funny and charming. GM knows what he's doing, which I honestly I've looked at. I, mm-hmm. I've had days recently. I'm I'm having a bit of trouble these days. I've had days where I just look at this review and I'm like, you know what? I do know what I'm doing. Uh, in, <laughs> at least in <laughs> one way. Lars. Absolutely, you do. that's true. Yeah. So thank you so much to Squeamy Beavers for going on <laughs> podcast addict and leaving that review. It makes all the difference, everyone. It does make the it does make all the difference. Thank you. That, thank you so much. Genuinely thank you. It's it's that it's, name it's, just keeps making me think of Breakfast of Champions. Oh. Vonnegut, the one with the sketches. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Such a good name. A number of uh, apricots in that book, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's move on. It's time to play our game. Everything you've learned as you've explored the sixth floor of the Dungeons Below Gauntlet has told you about the obsessive subterranean worm creatures known as Sugathis that dwell here with the flesh-warped creations they've been researching since the days of Belcora Haravax. But when you entered a blood-covered torture chamber filled with devils spying on the Sugathis, you learned that the Flesh Warpers are not alone. Now, battle has broken out between you and the devils, and things have quickly taken a turn for the deadly. Ao was brought nearly to her knees by a bearded devil named Stragaz. And when she retreated to the safety of the hallway outside the devil's torture chamber, another devil summoned a swarm of hungry rats right on top of her, Trill, and Mag. So here's the situation as we jump back into combat. We're right in the middle of round one. And here's the situation as it stands. The major threat here is the bearded devil, Stragaz, whose thick skin protects him from damage. I neglected to mention at the end of our session yesterday that Ao's arrow that hit Stragaz did not fully hurt him. Some of his thick skin absorbed some of the damage from the arrow. Oy. His iron beard wriggles with the stench of disease, and his glaive's jagged edge effortlessly cuts wounds, bearing the infection of hell. Ooh. There are also two Zebubs harassing the party from a distance, most recently by summoning the aforementioned swarm of rats. Ao has a wound on her from the bearded devil's glaive, and she is bleeding profusely from it. Finally, there is green, heatless fire emanating from Stragaz and the two Zebubs, thanks to Trill casting fairy fire on them a spell that makes it so that monsters can't turn invisible, basically. So here we go. The last thing that just happened is this Zebub inside of the torture chamber just summoned a swarm of rats on top of three of the heroes. Let's see what that rat swarm does. They are crawling all over your feet, up your legs, starting to nibble on your hands. They do some swarming and start biting. This bite is going to do one point of damage, but I need the three of you to make this reflex save that I just put into chat to see if you take double, half, or zero damage. And so, Lars, while we're rolling that, can I ask, Yeah. Um, can the sudden appearance of a swarm of rats trigger an attack of opportunity? Nope. 
This is just a magical thing that has swarmed up around you. Uh, attack of opportunity is triggered by manipulate actions and move actions and ranged attacks, basically. So the sort of internal movement of the swarm is not the sort of thing that I got you. Exactly. I think that if the swarm were to try to move, like if the rats are all running in unison, you could potentially then swing at them. But right now yeah. they're just sort of roiling around you. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I mostly wanted to keep my streak alive of asking you whether things uh, can trigger <laughs> attack of opportunity a, that hey, can't trigger attack of opportunity. New year, um, new bit. Let's go. What if Robin rolls occultism? Will that trigger attack of opportunity? <laughs> uh, it's honestly kind of a relief to get it out of the way in like the first two minutes of the episode and not have to think about it, look for an opening, you know. All right. How did you guys do in your reflex save? There is a There is a rule in the game that says the minimum damage that you can take from an attack is one. So half damage in this case is going to be one point of damage. So Ao, did you succeed? Did you fail? Or did you critically whatever against this DC 16 reflex save? Uh, I succeeded, but it turns out it's not gonna matter. Doesn't matter. You take one point of damage as these rats go <laughs> and Mag, uh, how did Mag do on her save? It's 25 for me, which is also a success. Doesn't one matter. One point of damage as these rats nibble upon you. How did Trill do? Well. I'm pretty sure I've gone and blown my one really good roll this entire episode, which is how it usually happens recently. Mm -hmm. And Trill got a critical success. Hey, that did matter. 31. Nice. So Trill managed to shake all of these rats off when they come back and start biting once more, this time for four points of damage. And let's get that reflex save one more time. I love a reflex save. How did Mag do? Mag fails, just a 14 this time, five on the die. All four points of damage as these rats sink their teeth into the soft parts of her leg. How did Ao do? 17, which is a success. Okay, two points of damage to Ao, and how did Trill do? Uh, Trill rolled another 31. Zero success. points of damage. However much these rats try to cling onto Trill, they keep falling off. She's too tiny. She just keeps hitting him away with her loot. Yep, she's dancing. Pew, 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 pew. Maybe it's because of her career doing performance that <laughs> this I'm is. I'm used to people throwing things at me. Happening this way. Yes. Up next, I think in the turn order, it is Mag's turn. All right. Does this rat swarm stick around? As does long it, like, as. become an, a thing in the initiative uh, order? It does not become a thing in the initiative order. The way that summoning spells work are if the caster ten spends an action to sustain the spell, that also mm -hmm. casts as an action to command the the summon to do something. So if that Zabub that summoned these rats does that, those rats will then immediately get two actions. Got it. Got it. All right. Thank you for that. Um. Anyway, Mag is not as concerned with the um rats that, uh, as menacing as the art looks, uh, they seem to just nibble pretty gently. Um, she is more concerned with the giant terrifying devil that nearly killed her friend. So Mag is going to take up a position next to, just north of this thing, and, and between her and Isthen, they will then be blocking the way into the hallway, which should give um, Hurt Ao and Trill a little bit of extra cover. I'm pleased that this creature already used its attack of opportunity to take its extra hack at Ao, so I can get up to it without triggering another, yeah? Take your best shot at me. Sounds like a plan. Um, before, <laughs> uh, oh, and as the thing laughs in Mag's face, that causes Mag to rage. And then with her third action, an initial strike with the maul. That is going to be a 29 to hit. Yeah, that absolutely hits. All right, and that will be... All right, damage rolls, 18 damage. Okay, as you feel them all slam into this bearded devil, again, not all of that damage is going through, but it is oh, a man. sizable hit into his side, as he says. My clave has a new source of blood to slake its bloodthirst. <laughs> Ew. Thirst. He is articulate. I went to devil medical school. <laughs> That's it for Mag's turn. That was move, rage, attack. So Mag is kicked. Okay. The next up is the Zabub. The Zabub is 
is just behind this bearded devil that Mag just hit. The first thing they're going to do is look over the, the green fire covering them and say, I don't know what this stuff is, dude. What the hell is this? And they do a recall knowledge to see if they know what fairy fire is. This is going to be a recall knowledge check. I'm going to use religion because I imagine fairy fires on the divine deal. They look down and they say, Oh, I can't turn invisible. Dude, guys, we can't turn invisible anymore. And the devil starts to cast a spell. <gasps> it's the same spell that you heard this devil cast when they were out in the hallway. Raz, frasm, da, blaz, gaz, and a small portal opens up in front of them. Ugh. Ao sees this devil appear in the hallway right around the corner from where she is. Ooh. As they just, boop, dimension door across to another spot they can see. Mm. It is now Isthan's turn. That requires another sneer. Okay. I think it is time for Istan to go big or go home. So he Mag agrees. is going to, well, Mag just wants him to go home. End of story. <laughs> big would be okay. Big would be okay. <laughs> I'm going to use spell strike. And so Istan is going to trace over his staff, like runes formed of electric lightning crackle as he traces his way down it. And he is going to spell strike at the bearded devil with um, shocking grasp. I'm broken. A fumble card because you fumbled hard. Oh, the dice gods. It's oh, not good. Me. Poor Isthan. I, I don't know with spell strike off the top of my head whether I'm drawing a magical uh, fumble or oh, a yeah. um, or a, 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 a what am I doing a melee fumble you cast I, a spell it requires a spell a attack roll you make a melee strike with a weapon or unarmed attack so this is a melee strike yeah, yeah. okay this fumble is called wait what and you are confused this is oh, no. very, what? very bad. Oh, no. For those of you who would like a refresher on this, one of the worst conditions in the game, you don't have your wits about you and you attack wildly. You are flat-footed and you don't treat anyone as your ally and you can't delay, ready, or use reactions. You use all your actions to strike or cast offensive cantrips Though the GM can make you use other actions to facilitate attacks, such as drop, blah, 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 blah. Uh, your targets are determined randomly. If you have no available targets, you target yourself, automatically hitting but not scoring a critical hit. Each time you take damage from an attack or spell, you can attempt a DC 11 flat check to recover from your confusion and end the condition. Yikes. So the devil calls wow. out. <laughs> This is going to be easier than I thought it was going to be. Cool. And you got Not one more action, cool. right? Uh, but I have to use it to strike randomly. To strike randomly. And here are your possible targets. Because you have 10 feet of reach with your staff. Your targets are, your possible targets are Ao, the Rat Swarm, Trill, Mag, Bearded Devil, and the Zabub. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to roll a d6, and we're going to see who it is you target. That's the Rat oh. Swarm. So we got a map five attack to the Rat Swarm from Isthan. All righty. Uh, here we go. Uh, 19. That is a hit. Uh, 16 damage. Yo, oh, that's going to be All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. 16 points know, against, of damage against the rat swarm. You bash several of the rats apart and they go flying and there are just a handful of rats now swarming around your three friends, whom you do not recognize as allies, I should indicate. <laughs> yeah. Woof. 
tough round one. We end yeah, round no one with Ao bleeding, with Isthin confused, and rats swarming all around you as this bearded devil laughs haughtily. Speaking of which, it is now that bearded devil's turn. And he says, That was a pretty good hit. Check this one out. As he swings his glaive over towards Mag. 15 on the die, that is a 29 to hit. 29 hits. So this slashes into you for a total of 14 points of damage. That is a mix of slashing and evil damage. And also it cuts a gash on you. Then the devil swings you around to position you by pushing the glaive around to position you between himself and the Zabub. He can move me out of the way with his weapon? Yes. Oh, I guess he did that to Ao already. He drew her into the room. He did. Yikes. And here's the bad news. That's a free action. Oh. Doesn't feel free. Next up, he starts laughing again and brings not the glaive, but a claw forward with a quick agile motion towards Mag. That's a 19 to hit. 19 won't do it. Uh, so I'm imagining that claw, you know, he, he tries to use the weapon to move in one direction and the claw to move in the other. And Mag is able to, to um, whip her head back out of the way. And as you whip your head back, the iron bits of hair extend out towards you and start rubbing all over your face. Ew. With a 16 to hit. That also misses. Would I be able to attack of opportunity any of this? Nope. nope. Good talk. Nope. Uh, yeah, that's a miss. Um, <coughs> and the, uh, I guess the beard is not long enough to um, <laughs> to reach Mag either. Trill sees Mag sliced, moved, and then two quick dodges from Mag as it becomes Trill's turn. She is still swarmed with a few of these rats. What is Trill going to do? I have so many options for what Trill could do. And I'm trying to optimize. Um, the first thing Trill's going to do then is Trill sees poor Ao. Absolutely. She's getting hit so hard. And so Trill's going to end up casting a third level soothe on Ao. As Trill's healing magic washes over Ao. You get the sense that her wound is resisting the magical healing. And I need you to make a counteract check with your spell. So to make a counteract check, you need to make a spell attack roll to see if you can beat the DC of the effect trying to stop your healing. That was not great. That was a 16. Okay, so the DC for the counteract check was a DC 21. What that means when you fail a counteract check is that you successfully counteract anything of a lower counteract level than the thing that you're using. So because you used a level three soothe, that means it has a counteract level of level three. Unfortunately, this wound also has a counteract level of three. So you fail to counteract it with that counteract check. I only have one yeah, hero point. Yeah, it seems point. crazy at this point in the fight to use it. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's too early. I might say use it. Like, getting that healing. I anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah Robin, it's think, totally your yeah. call. You know, no, I'll use the hero point. Okay. So we're trying this counteract check again. So Trill tries to heal Ao with this soothe spell. The magic fizzles for a second. And you try again. And what was your counter uh, counter yes! this time? Finally, usually when I use a hero point, I end up with something lower. This time I got a twenty nine in total. Woo! So hey, that successfully nice. counteracts that wound, and you get your healing goes through. So how much healing does Ao have coming her way? That's a uh, twenty seven points of healing. Oh wow! Tremendous, wow. huge, okay. huge Woo! turn from Trill here. As Trill finishes that and sees that Ao is some colors coming back into Ao's fur. Is it Ao, Ao right now, right? Yeah, it was Ao. 
She's silver, so you know how much color is coming in. But you can tell. You can tell. Trill turns her eyes to Barbazu. Barbazu? The, the bearded devil Stragaz? Yeah. And Trill is going to... Someday we'll learn a character's name, but not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and Trill is actually going to try and um, uh, use her versatile performance. Oh, what are you going to do? To demoralize him. He's already a little bit frightened, so this demoralize, if you can critically succeed on it, could knock him down to frightened too. <laughs> that did not do it. Um, that was a one on the die. <laughs> That was a critical failure. Some bad rolls coming out tonight. Ah. So that doesn't Ooh. do anything in particular one way or the other. I've heard this song too many times to be frightened by it. I was born <laughs> to terrifying music. And you will die. Next time, bop. I'm going to give you some Hanson. I will mm, bop your friends to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. <coughs> I tried to set other people up. I tried. <laughs> and as as this song reverberates limply around the room, it is now Ao's turn. So Ao, uh, you know, she suffered mummy mange recently. Now she's got uh, an infernal wound, which she does not care for. Uh, and recalling her own heightened healing ability and also something she knows Fraum is capable of. She calls on her chromotherapy feet to try oh. and um, shine a green light on her infernal wound in hopes that she can help heal it. Okay, so there's something I want to tell you about this infernal wound. The DC for trying to recover from this wound, like the, when you take the persistent damage at the end of your turn, you roll a flat check. Instead of being a DC 15 to recover from the wound, it's a DC 20. The rules for this infernal wound say the DC for that flat check is reduced only to 15 if the bleeding creature or an ally successfully assists with recovery. So I think this chromotherapy that you're doing, because it auto tries to stop bleeding, it doesn't require any first aid. This is an incredible, fortuitous use of this feat to try to resolve this wound. And I want to ask you before you spend two actions and make this extra flat check, is it meaningful to Ao that this wound that could potentially kill her is going to potentially be solved by Frown? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, and like, we haven't seen Frown do this either, right? No. I think as part of her testing the limits of her power, finding new ways to expand her power. This may be the very first time that she's been able to coax Fraum into... He, he's done so much helping her deceive and helping her diplomacy and a little bit of light shining. But I think this is almost like desperation calls on her to sort of force her magic to a greater extent. Because the way that chromotherapy works is that you take light that you have, light is shining from Fraum, you change it to a specific color to try to stop... Persistent damage. Let's see how that goes. Let's get that DC 15 flat check as green light from Fraum shines on your wound. Oh, that's a one on the oh, die. Oh, no. So what that Ugh. means is that you keep bleeding. The bleed has not stopped yet. You have one more action on your turn because chromotherapy was two actions. Whew. Um, trying to decide if she's going after the swarm or swarms we know are resistant to physical damage. That's right. Ao fires one quick arrow from chompers at the Zebub that has gone through the portal that's now to the north of her. So this is the Zebub hanging around the corner and he's muttering to himself. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And that's a 19. And that 19 hits. Thank goodness these little these little beezies are weak. Am I right? Cool. And that is 10 points of damage. All right. As you get to apply your sneak attack damage, you get the impression that not all of that damage is going through either as these devils also seem to resist physical damage. 
Whoa, okay, we gotta hurt them with magic. We gotta hurt Blash them with- em. We have to insult them to death. So I'm gonna roll a D6 of bleed damage. The amount of bleed damage that Ao has coming towards her is six. So you take that bleed damage and then you get to make a flat check to see if the bleed damage stops. And I'm rolling a D20. Correct. You wanna get a 20 on the die to not be bleeding anymore. Ooh. How about a 10, but since we're doubling it because it was critical? <laughs> Ao continues to bleed as the Zebub around the corner slips back further into that far hallway and attempts to hide from Ao. I know that trick, you little bastard. <laughs> and that hide attempt is going to be a 22 versus your perception DC, which I believe is a 21. So this, this is a bub. Um, slips into the shadows and is now hidden from Ao, and takes a little bit of extra cover as well, waiting for something to happen. Mm. It is now Mag's turn. Mag, I just want to let Question. you know. Yes. Was it the one that was making the swarm? No. Oh, boo. So it's Mag's turn. Mag, uh, David, I just want to let you know, you're... Yeah face-to-face -face with this bearded devil, and Isthen is currently confused about 10 feet away from you. Uh -huh. The confused condition ends if that uh, if the person who is confused takes any damage, they get a DC 10 flat check to try to not be confused anymore. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let you know, in case slapping Isthen is something that maybe you're interested in doing, you uh -huh. could potentially do a very small, <laughs> small amount of damage to Isthen and give him that DC 11 flat check without doing much damage to him. Just something to consider as you are pinned between a Zebub and a bearded devil. So in order to release, so I could use an action to give Isthen a chance to ditch the confused condition. And the only cost would be the benefit of slapping him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. First of all, would it be obvious to Mag that Isthen is confused since the only thing he's done since becoming confused is attack an adversary? Like, is he sort of visibly off? Like, he, you know, he kind of like is saying stuff. Oh, who are you all people? Or, yeah, or Armat, would it just is, be based on his behavior? What's Isthen doing right now, Armat? That's a great question. I guess I imagine him as like, aggressively trying to since he went after the rat swarm last turn I think he's aggressively trying to count out how many rats are in the swarm like his confusion has manifested in this like need for mathematical accuracy about how many combatants he's seeing and maybe he's counting the entire whole battlefield um all right well I don't think mag is is thinking about Isthen. mag is thinking about the primary adversary before her. Mag stands extra tall and she screams in his face. I'm not so impressed. And in so doing, she makes an attempt to demoralize him. That's going to be 27. Okay, so that unfortunately is not a critical success. That is a success, which means that the devil is frightened one which he was already uh, because of Trill's Dirge of Doom. Oh, they don't stack. No. Nope. Wasted action. Good talk. All right, Mag will now step rather than stride. She's only going to step five feet away because she's trying not to trigger the attack of opportunity. So she makes a deft movement back to the square she originally was occupying, um, which again is just trying to head off anyone's entry into the hallway unimpeded. Also keeps her from being flanked. Correct. And with her third action, she will make another mall strike. Against and the bearded devil. Is... Oh! Oh, it was almost a really fat die roll, and at the very last minute, came up to a three, so that's only 18 to hit. <laughs> I am not terribly impressed either, dude. Man, I really shouldn't demoralize either. I don't think I've ever succeeded once at doing that. You did succeed oh, this time. Did. It's just that they were already frightened. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Fair enough. All right. Well, that's um, that's Mag's turn. 
At the end of Mag's turn, this infernal wound starts bleeding. You take one point of damage, and I need you to roll a DC 20 flat check. That is a nine. As Mag continues bleeding, the Zebub in the room once more sustains the spell to summon the rat swarm. Two more quick bites from the remaining rats onto Ao and Trill. The first bite is going to do four points of damage unless you make this reflex save. A DC 16 reflex save. Okay, Trill, how'd you do? Uh, just a basic success. So that's two points of damage to Trill. How did Ao do? Critical success for Ao. Ao is unscathed as they start biting once more, this time four more points of damage and another reflex save from the two of you. How did Ao do that time? Success for Ao that time. How did Trill do that time? Just regular success again. Okay, so two more points of damage to both of you. So this Zabub has two more actions, and what they're going to do is fly past Mag to try to flank Mag with the Bearded Devil. I guess that I could AOO, but I don't even know if I want to use it on this thing. Um, You should just use it. Should I just use it? All right. um, Well, as it does so, I think at last I may actually get to use an attack of opportunity. Is that, am I, did I get it? Yes, you do. This Zabub flies haughtily, shouting out, This is so easy, dude. And then Mag's maul flashes out towards it. Yeah, uh, um, Mag, like, very deftly bends one knee and then swings all the way around in a giant arc to make a a maul strike against it. And that is a 35. That is a 20 on the die. You've got a draw. Nice, nice, nice. So yes, that is a critical hit from Mag. Let's see what kind of a crit card we get on this bludgeoning attack. This is a crit effect. You can choose to, if you would like to, use this instead of your knockdown critical effect from the Maul. You gain one action that you can use before the end of your turn to use an attack action against the target. So your options are either you knock them down or you get one more action to attack this particular Zabub. But that action would be on my turn, not right now. Because I just did this as an AOO, as a reaction. Yeah, so you get an extra action on your turn, basically. To uh, hit this thing? Correct. Only, if yes. it survives. Yes. I'm, I'm going to take the extra action on my turn. Um, I might kill it now anyway. So let's see what happens. That's Ooh. 48 damage, so that's probably going to do it. That absolutely does it. This is above flies nice. haughtily by Mag and huge gets swatted out of the f- sky. It's fly wings it's crumpling as it falls to the ground. The swarm Ooh. goes away Ooh. as the Zabub falls to the ground. <sighs> it. Well, that was a nice thing to happen and there have not been a ton of those in this fight so far. <laughs> it is now Isthin's turn as Mag swings around and hits the Zabub. Isthin can hit one of one, two, three, four targets. One through three are your friends. Four is the Zabub. Let's see who Isthin targets. Three. That's Mag. So, Armat, how does this work? What happens as Isthin confusedly attacks Mag? It says I have to attack, so I think he's just going to go after her with his staff and make a basic strike. Okay. This should heal relations. 21 to hit Mag. Yeah, 21 does not hit Mag. I'm guessing that as she's polishing off this Zabub, one more strike comes in from Isthin and just barely avoids, uh, you know, maybe grazes her, um, but doesn't really connect. Uh, Who am I attacking (laughs) next? I rolled another D4. You're attacking Mag again. This time with a map five strike. 14 to hit. And 14 is also not going to do it. And then Isthin swings confusedly at Trill for a map 10. I think he's not going to get his ring anytime soon. Doesn't look that way. (laughs) How was that attack roll, Armat? 14. So 
Trill manages to dodge that. Three quick misses from Isthen. It's the top of round three. Can you believe it? We're Cute. two rounds down. It is now the Bearded Devil's turn, and the Bearded Devil, they're, they're too drawn in by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mag. This is too much fun for them. So the Bearded Devil is going to swing its Hellforged Glaive at Mag. That is a 17 to hit. Whew. 17 doesn't do it. Curse um, you, stand not, still. Not a good roll. And they swing again with the, with the glaive. This time, a 17 to hit. <laughs> this time it hits, yeah. Clang to the left, clang to the right. Stop moving. And then they reach out their beard <laughs> and try to beard you. Comrade knocked down in combat can really throw you, huh? Is there a is there a fumble card that makes you shave? There is, oh, and it's actually good. called Awkward Attack. The beard is not growing <laughs> the way that it should, and the bearded devil becomes flat-footed until the end of its next turn. I'll take it. It's Trill's turn, as the devil has a bad round against Mag. Yeah, about time. The devil's got a bad round. The rat swarm's gone. Things have turned. So, Trill, eyes still locked on this devil. Trill's going to go ahead and continue to try and debuff this jerk and cast Hideous Laughter. Okay, so the devil starts getting overtaken by uncontrollable laughter and must make a will save. Yes. That's a three on the die, a <gasps> failure with a 14 against your 22 oh. spell DC. Excellent. And now he has slowed one and can't use reactions. Oh, wow. That's handy. That's what I was hoping for. That's a great spell. Very big. This is another sustained spell. So as long as you suspend an action to sustain this spell, this devil will be slowed. Oh, this is so good. So and the we'll devil starts that, act, that reaction. He's been laughing already. He's like, ha, 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 ha. Then he starts getting like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> as he starts wasting his time laughing and doubling over. It's bad. That's right. And that was the end of her second level spell slots. All right. So yeah, Trill's gonna do a recall knowledge on like other ways to damage this guy. And what's up with his damage? Also, he keeps resisting damage. Sure, give me a uh, religion check, please. Can do. Okay. So what does Trill want to know? You want to know weaknesses? It sounds like. Yeah, I think weakness, like not like what its weaker saves are. But like but... what kinds of damage it's weak to. Yeah. Okay, I will tell you that this devil is immune to fire damage and weak to good damage. Hmm, where's the demon when you need him? But nothing more about, um, like, why he's resisting some damage. We're not getting that, we can't get Oh, that. yeah, they're also resistant to physical damage, for sure. So that's just, <laughs> Sorry. That's just straight yes. up resistant to yes. physical. Okay. Resistant, resistant to, physical. to physical and fire. Immune and to fire. to good. Immune weak to, to good. Weak to I mean, physical, makes sense. The to devil's fire. immune to fire. Yeah. And weak to good. So Trill's got some great information as she thinks about what she knows about this devil. It is now Ao's turn. What is the status of the others above that's up by them? What's going on that's hidden? I don't they know are it is. hiding from you, yes. You have a sense of what square they're in, but you can't see them. So if you try to target them, it'll be a DC 11 flat check. Unless you step forward and then look at them. In which case you can see them. Um... Ao walks around the corner, pissed at this thing that's been skulking around, and tries to confront it. Ah! <laughs> there you are, you little shit. You thought you could hide. A hider knows how to find the hidden. And with that, she fires two arrows at this thing. All right, let's get that first attack roll. Uh, is it 26? That is a hit. That's 19 points of damage because okay. it's flat-footed to her since it's frightened. And only some of that goes through, but it is a big wound cut into that zebub. Die, you little fucker! And she <laughs> fires another arrow at it. F 14 to hit. 
That misses as that arrow lodges itself in the door to the arena behind the Zabub. You'll be dead soon. Ah! No! Oh, come on, come on, come on! As they start freaking out. At the end of Ao's turn, she's going to take some bleed damage. That's 10 points of bleed damage. Yikes. And I, and I need you to make a DC 20 flat check. This time it could work. A A 20 on the die! Holy crow! Ao's bleeding fades away, her her wound stitching itself up. That is huge. Anger heals me, you (laughs) shitbird. It's Mag's turn. Um, Yeah, sorry, babe, were you talking to me? (laughs) Just, um, I get it. It's your love language, right? That's right. <laughs> Sh- Shipbird's my nickname. <laughs> I guess it's my nick. Well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's always pet name for me. This <laughs> Shipbird. Shipbird. <laughs> All right. Well, Mag has a has a tough choice because, on the one hand, she's been primarily engaged with the terrifying devil that's menacing all of her friends, and the, on the other hand. <laughs> this this damn fool is then just took two swipes at her because he's lost his bearings in combat. Worth pointing out also, you now don't have to worry about attack of opportunity from the devil. Oh yeah. True. All right. He's well, lost his uh, reactions. He, he has oh, lost yeah. his reactions. He doesn't have as many actions either. Well That's how it works, right, Lars? Uh uh no. Not at all. No, it's not? No. But he doesn't have reactions anymore. Why not? Because hideous laughter. of hideous laughter. Hideous laughter. The target is, that is slowed and, works? and can't use what? reactions. What? I don't yeah. like that. Okay, fine. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, it was a perfect spell. I'll give a hero point to Trill. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. What I've decided to do is for episodes 10, uh, 100 through 104, they're all Trill. I'm just giving Robin hero <laughs> points every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbled I mean, this time. That's I, fine because I seem to use them every episode when I have them now. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Every every time I ask about um, a, a time that I can't use attack of opportunity, Robin gets a hero point. It just <laughs> makes sense. All right. Um, I'm here for it. Uh, all right. So Mag's first action, she's going to make a strike. She's going to start with another mall strike on the big devil in front of her. We just want to land that blow. That is a 26 to hit. That hits. All right, and that will be 20 damage. Again, not all of it getting through. The the thick skin of the devil, as he's sort of chortling at you in a possessed kind of gross way, it still absorbs some of the damage. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. (laughs) Um, I love that. All right, so as the, the hammer comes, I'm imagining that that's a a regular sledgehammer strike overhead. And then as that thing lands, Mag will wrench the maul back and she'll use the bottom of the of the maul handle to try and sh- shove thrust at uh, Istin's, the breastplate of his armor. Interesting. So it sounds like you're trying to do less damage than the maximum damage you could do with the maul. Right? Yes. Okay. That's right. I, I don't want to like completely flatten Istin like a pancake. I want to ring his bell and snap him out of it. Okay. So we're going to treat that. We're going to treat that like an unarmed attack. Okay. So All right. um, go ahead and give me that that uh, map five roll against Tristan. Nope. Against Istin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's a long night. Istin. Um, and we'll, we'll see what kind of damage you do. It's going to be not a lot of damage if you do wind up hitting him. All right. So unarmed map five is that, which is just a 15 to hit. Not going to do it against the armor, I don't imagine. It will not, unfortunately. Okay. First um, time ever we've been sad that an in-party hit didn't work. <laughs> well... Uh, I'm going to try it again. Okay, this is a map 10. Or you could hero point it? Oh, I could. I guess I have an extra one? And Robin has a bunch. I only have one now. I keep using them. No, you have two. Well, no, you, you, can, had, you, you had you had two, two, then you got back up to two. You have two hero points. Wait, no, I only had one at the start you of had this. Two at the start. Oh, that's yeah. nice to know. Mm-hmm. I keep giving Something them to you. Was wrong on my counter. That's the thing about these episodes. I'll um I'll use the hero I'll use a hero point to re-roll my attempt to um 
ring <laughs> ring Istan's bell and, and snap him out of his bewilderment. All right. So here is that unarmed strike again. And that's also a terrible roll. So that's just an 18. That also will not hit. All right, and I'll uh, I'll try it a third time. It's like a super huge map, but if I get a really nice roll, it would still. If you crit him, you just might do it. Let's see what happens. Do we get a crit card? <laughs> Is a ten gonna do it? Badly, no. Actually, that might even be a critical miss. No, Is that worse? No, do I like fine. you no. know trip no. and fall and hit no. myself? Or it's whatever? all good. So Mag, we all die. Mag tries to knock some sense into Istan twice, doesn't quite get it. At the end of her Appreciate turn, the attempt, though. that's not the first two times she's attempted to knock some sense. <laughs> At the end of Mag's turn, she's going to take three points of bleed damage, and I need that DC twenty flat check, please. Here it is. That's a six. Okay. At Keep this bleeding. point, the Zebub that is facing off with Ao starts freaking out and casting a spell, and they're like, "Raz, Raz, 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 Raz." Ayo feels something crawling around her feet. She looks down. Is it a rat swarm? No. It's a swarm of squirrels. <laughs> a squirrel swarm. As hundreds of squirrels start swarming all over Ayo's body. They start to nibble at her. Two points of damage with a reflex save. It's a critical success, 26. No damage to Ao. Three more points of damage with another reflex save. As these swarms go ham on you. Success at 24. Okay, one point of damage to Ao then, as one of these squirrels manages to grab a hold of Ao. Now you're all going to die, and she's pointing at each squirrel. You <laughs> and you and you. Wait, how many are there? Get a solid number for me, Istin calls out. <laughs> Istin, you're confused. Focus. I know, I know. I can't count how many there are. <laughs> the bearded devil sees these squirrels pop out. What the fuck are you people doing back there? <laughs> <laughs> As his laughter again rips through his body, it is Istin's turn. I don't understand why there's no save for confused. Maybe we should stop using fumble cards, guys. Maybe it's time for me to remove that confused fumble card from the deck at the very least. It's pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. Here's the situation with Isthen. There are one, two, three, four possible targets ranging from the squirrels down to the bearded devil. Here's who's Isthen is targeting. It's the squirrels. Trying nice. to count them. He just hacks at them. He yes. loves swarms. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> it's like that scene in, in Rain Man where he just like throws up all the cards and he can still count them. Uh, 27 to hit the squirrels. 27 to hit the squirrels is a critical hit against the squirrels. <laughs> How much Amazing. damage did you just roll us then? Uh, that would be 36 damage. Wow. 36 points Amazing. of damage to the squirrels as you effortlessly in one swoop completely annihilate all of the squirrels as you count them one by one <laughs> and the squirrels are gone. Isthen has two more attacks. There are three possible targets for Isthen to hit and he rolls to attack Trill Oof, with a map I five. Like all right. Of course, now is when I start getting the wow. good die rolls. 26 to hit. That's a hit. Yep. Istin, we only have one trill. Don't hit her. The squirrels were fine. <laughs> I was just making sure there was only one I of them. I know I have a high-pitched voice. I'm not a squirrel. Are you sure, though? Have you... Uh, that How is much seven damage, damage am I taking, dude? Seven, okay. Okay. And Istin has one more strike. A three on that chooser means that's targeting the bearded devil. All nice. Right. With a map 10 attack. 13. That misses. You couldn't have hit sadly. him. Come on. It's the beginning of round four. This bearded devil is laughing, is slowed, and is the only serious threat posing you, but he is still, dare I say it, a threat. First thing he's going to do is target Mag one more time with a glaive strike. Two on the die, a 16 to hit. Oof. Nope. 
And then it's time for a beard strike. He reaches out his face and tries to rub it on you. 18 to hit. And once again, Mag is able to, to just pull back. Just a lot of float like a butterfly, sting like a bee stuff, you know, like a lot of uh, a lot of Mag just uh, pulling her head back Muhammad Ali style and just not getting hit by any of this stuff. Yeah, rope Mag, doping him. R- exactly. Rope doping this bearded devil. That's only two actions because that's all I've got because I'm slowed because the bearded devil continues laughing as he starts to swing a third time. <laughs> Truly a hideous, hideous laughter. And let's continue that hideous the laughter. Hideous is- it's then Trill's turn. Trill's dirge of doom wears off at the beginning of her turn meaning that none of the combatants are now frightened. Trill is going to, uh, I guess she has to spend a, she has to spend an action to sustain the hideous laughter, right? Is that what you said before? Yep. Okay. So her first action is sustaining the hideous laughter. More laughter from the bearded devil. Yep. Yep. Let's, let's keep him a mess. Trill can't see where the Zebub is, right? No, but you have the sense that AO is fighting somebody up there. So, if I did electric arc, would I be able to also do the z- would I be able to also target the zebub? Um, I think in order to target something with a spell, you have to be able to see them so you could yeah, potentially reposition and then do that. Well, I can't cuz I've already spent one action. You could always target Isthen with your electric arc if you wanted to. Zap him out of it. I kind of want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Trill will awesome. at this point. <laughs> I love that. Trill's going to, after playing some, like, dopey, silly music to continue the hideous laughter, uh, Trill's going to get a little more, you know, alt-rock on it and get a little electric. And that's 11 points of damage. Okay, I'm going to do the save for the devil first. 13 on the die, a 25, so they're going to take half damage. Darn. How's this then doing? <laughs> he fails. 19 uh, he takes total. full damage. Sorry. Isten. So Isten's going to take full damage, and Isten gets a DC 11 flat check to save out of being confused. All right. Let's see I, how I'm we sorry, do. I'm sorry. You're so pretty. I'm sorry. I just I needed you to get back with the program. Uh, nine on the flat check. He is still confused. So Isten gets jostled oh around, God. shocked by Trill's electric rock, but not enough to get back his senses. Oh, Iston, I'm so sorry. I appreciate you trying to shock him out of it, though. <laughs> it is Ao's turn. Ao has a Zebub co- cowering in the wall against the door to the arena. What is Ao going to do? But it is no longer frightened, correct? Correct. Oh, I told you you were going to die, so die. Um, and she just fires another arrow at it. Oof. That's a 17. That misses. Fires another one. That's a 28. And that hits as Chompers' arrow finds its way to the Zabub. Uh, and she does six points of damage. And again, you don't get the sense that all of that is going through to target this creature as their devil thick skin bounces some of the damage away. AO has one more action. Is there anything she can do to get is then another shot. You could shoot and him. Waking up. All right. Ao Ao spends her last action seeing if she can uh, nick Is then in the bottom with an arrow. <laughs> it's a nineteen. Thanks for the attempt. I appreciate it. Another attack misses Is then as everyone starts trying to snap their new friend out of it. It is Mag's turn. Mag, bleeding from an infernal wound, toe-to-toe with a laughing devil. What will Mag do? Um, yeah, Mag is going to go back to addressing the uh, the laughing devil that gave her the infernal wound. <laughs> Seems like everybody else is working on Isthen, and um, she doesn't consider him to be as much of a threat which is her own bias. But there we go. So here comes a mall strike. Let's just... this. Uh, we'll do an uppercut this time, right? Feels right. Mag's mall swings up towards the bearded devil. For a 30 to hit. 
And that is going to hit. And that is 25 damage. A big strike against the devil as they start rasping as they're laughing. Stragaz says, <laughs> gritting their teeth, bearing down on you, forehead pressed straight into Mags as the iron horns of this devil loom above Mag's head. Mag stares him in the eye as he tries to leer over her and says, What's so funny now? And then we'll make an overhead strike just as she made an uppercut a moment ago. Here is a second mall strike with that Ooh. map. It's a 24 to hit. That hits as well. So it's 22 more damage. Yikes. And that is more than enough as this devil presses his forehead into yours, seething, laughing, that overhead strike causes the devil to collapse down onto the floor in front of you, dead on the ground. You have one more action. I mean, slow clap for Mag. I know we got another action, but geez. For sure. All right, so that was a massive uppercut and then a a downward finishing blow. And so as the maul strikes downward and ends this hideous devil's time on this plane, Mag will release the maul's handle, leaving the maul just where it is on the ground, which is a free action as I understand it. It is. And then she will turn on her heel... <laughs> And punch Istin in the face. Here is... And it has it coming. A 23 to snap Istin's ridiculous half-elf ass out of his reverie. Does that hit, Armat? Uh, that definitely hits. Huzzah. So I guess that's nine damage. Okay. All right. I like the idea she's wearing the ring and it leaves a mark on his face when she punches him. Istin <laughs> gets rattled. His clock gets clung. That's a phrase. <laughs> and rolls a new flat a seven. Check. Holy shit. Oh Still confused as Mag just Aren't starts. we all? How many punches did you just throw? That was too many. <laughs> At the end of Mag's turn, it's one more point of bleed damage, and I need another DC 20 flat check. Another six. So I keep bleeding. Mag continues to bleed. The Zabub at this point starts trying to run. They start buzzing and flying towards the north hallway, screaming out, Oh, Strikers! Uh, I guess I, I don't have a boss anymore. I, I gotta go, dude. I gotta fucking go! And the, the Zabub starts flying down the hallway, opens up a portal, slips through it, and disappears from sight. Hmm annoying. The three of you surround Istin. Istin, confused about what's happening. All of you are foes. None of you are allies. It is now Istin's turn. Istin can choose between targeting Mag and Trill. He targets Mag with another strike with a staff. And as, as he raises the staff to strike Mag again, she growls at him. Oh, bring it, you fool. 19 to hit. Nope. Not going to be able to do it. But that does trigger Mag's attack of opportunity. Why? Against Istin. She can slap him. She's trying to get him out of it. But why do you get an attack of opportunity? I don't understand because I took it as an L6 feat. Like, what, what are we saying? He's attacking you. Yeah, that doesn't trigger attack. He's got to move. It's manipulates and moves, baby. <sighs> Isthen gets to attack randomly one more time. He randomly attacks Mag. All right, let's see. <laughs> As the two of you go toe to toe, slapping each other, bashing at each other. <laughs> 14 to hit Mag. And I'm imagining he's kind of lunges and it's just not, it's not even close. Mag is just standing there shaking her head at this folly. Yeah, just a flurry of wild strikes from him. And now Istin is convinced that Trill is going to hurt him. 
Isthen lashes out at Trill. You keep that loot away from me. I mean it. Nine to hit. That's a miss. Three wild misses from Isthen as it is now Trill's turn. Uh, and no way. Trill is going to... Um... Trill is going to smack him with her loot. <laughs> oh, After okay. After he just requested, she keep exactly. it Exactly, because that, that annoyed her. Wow. And it's a 23. That hits. And it's just two damage. A DC 11 flat check from Isthen. Can they beat some sense into him? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I can't buy a roll tonight. And Trill, after she smacks her, she kind of smacks him as she walks by. Yes. And actually... Uh, four on the die, just... Uh, oh, four, f- four <laughs> on the die. Oh, could I do an attack of opportunity against Trill? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You absolutely can. <laughs> no! <laughs> and that's how the party dies. We said we were all going to die in this fight. We just didn't know it was self-immolation that was what was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so Trill smacks Eston in the head, continues to walk by, and goes down to the de- to the devil who's... Is he dead? Is he dying? He's Is dead. he just gone? He's totally dead. Yes. And she looks down at him and she says in Infernal, Now Glenn Ganesh lot a person gonna break your coffers. Dang dang bonobo? I I can't believe you you Is yeah. that are those all three of your actions? <laughs> yeah. What did you just yeah. say? Do I am I allowed she, to know what you said? <laughs> she basically cursed at him and said, oh. How could you? Your contract is over. Oh. So just in case people didn't know that Trill learned Infernal at some ah, point through yes, her studies. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm actually hoping you guys managed to kill Isthen in this fight. <laughs> Already? <laughs> because that would be thematically <laughs> so perfect. Like, <laughs> the Vallis family is just doomed. <laughs> oh, you want to know what happened to your dad? This is what happened to your dad. The idea that there is a family curse is becoming more and more likely. The amount of hardship that the Vallis family are met. Isthen has, the rubber has yet to hit the road. I think the thing that happened today was like not okay. And we're pulling that, that come out fumble card. That's the last time that's ever happening. Oh, well, I, I, I appreciate that, but uh, don't do it on my account. It, you know, it is the will of the, of the dice gods. No, I'm doing it on the audience's account. This is ridiculous. Okay. What's Ao doing? Ao walks down, slaps Mag across the face and says, Mag, Hit him and make it count <laughs> uh, for a 22. You're hitting Mag with a, tw- with a thing? Mm-hmm. A 22. That hits Mag, I believe. Is that right, oh David? Oh, my God. Uh, it, it is. I mean, what? <laughs> what if it is the two? <laughs> hit him. She says, hit him and make it count. And then she just stands there with her third action and screams into the void. Okay, I'm calling that an aid for whoever tries to hit Isthen next. That's an aid with whatever skill you want to call it. It's Mag's turn. Mag just got belted across the face. Everyone (laughs) slapping each other, trying to get this team on the the right track. This this team is having trouble, guys. The immediate (laughs) mortal threat is gone, but things are not working the way that they are supposed to. Oh it is God. Mag's turn. What will Mag do? Headbutt Isthen. Okay, let's get that attack roll. <laughs> that is a 33. That's a <laughs> critical hit. How much damage are we talking about? 12. Oh, God. 12 points of damage to Isthen. And I believe because you're raging, your critical specialization for unarmed attacks goes through, which means that Isthen needs to make this fortitude save in order to not be slowed as Mag rings his bell ferociously. Please fail the save. Oh, oh God's <laughs> sake. No. Crit success. No. 20 on the die. <laughs> which I would have, have been the role. clearly done something to offend the D20 Which gods. would have been the so, role. The role to get you, to snap you out of this if I hadn't critted you. Okay, good talk. <laughs> I, no, I love Istin's heel turn here. This is the moment when he like reveals, ha ha, you fools. I was uh, Belcora all the time. Are these 12 points of damage enough to snap Isthen out of it? Let's get that flat check. DC 11. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) That's a one on the die. One on the die. Mag has two more actions. Let's keep going. Yeah, Mag will. He refuses to get with the program. If this uh, fight uh, has devolved into everybody 
beating each other down. Mag just mercilessly pummeling Esten, trying to knock some sense into him. How does this next attack look? Could could I grab him and and or does it have to be an unarmed strike? If you want to give him saves, you should hit him. All right. <laughs> Very happily. So so Mag at this point still still raging afresh from AO hitting her and now hitting Isthen screams at Isthen. What are you good for? <laughs> and headbutts him again. That is a, oh, I should have taken a map. So that's a 27 to hit. That also hit. Okay, let's roll some damage. Here we go. It's seven damage. Okay. Isten. Flat check. DC 11. (laughs) That's a three, Lars. That is a three. Mag has one more action. Gosh, this feels like the first... um... The, the, the gibber, first gibbering mouther fight. Except again. the gibbering mouther now is your friend! <laughs> Mag has one more action. So uh, I have so, genuinely moved to like, I want Istin to die right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> one more action for Mag. Oh, Over let's it. go. <laughs> Mag attempts to oblige with a third headbutt. <laughs> and that's just a 13. At the end of Mag's turn, four more points of bleed damage. Let's get that DC 20. Oh. <sighs> That's a 20 on the die. No Mag more bleeding. Saves right. out of the bleed. No longer bleeding. <laughs> Beautiful. Isthen, we're rolling dice. We're flipping coins. We're seeing who Isthen's going to hit. It's Mag. <laughs> In my mind, everyone is just screaming at this point. Everyone's like, stop it. No, you stop it. You, Susa, stopping. 31 to hit. That's, That's a hit. That hits. Eight damage. <sighs> okay. <laughs> now Isthen's going to hit. Mag, one more time. Oh my god. 28 to hit. That hits. Could have used any of these rolls on that first attack. (laughs) 19 points of damage. A massive strike against Mag. Now Istan's gonna confusedly strike. Trill. Again. 20 to hit. Wasn't he slowed? Doesn't he only get two actions? Misses. He wasn't slowed. We failed that one. We succeeded. Don't worry about it. It's Trill's turn. Isthen is freaking out, hitting everybody. How is this going to end? (laughs) It's not. And and as it transitions to Trill's turn, Mag, Mag calls out to the ceiling at this point. Why do we want this person here? (laughs) It's Trill's turn, Trill, Trill in annoyance kicks Tristan, or Isthen, (laughs) kicks Isthen in the knee. Okay. (laughs) Let's go. Attack roll. For Trill, that's kind of a high kick, I imagine, actually. (laughs) That's a 23. That hits. Okay. (laughs) And so that's just one point of damage. All right. Uh, Let's let's get that DC 11 flat check. (laughs) That's a one, Lars. Okay. Uh, Trill. Oh, my gosh. Trill kicks him in the knee again. Trill kicks him in the knee again. Um, so that's unarmed attack with map. <laughs> 20 on the die, critical hit. We're not going to, we're, we're not rolling. We're, I'm not pulling a, a no, crit card. We have to go to bed. This not. is so stupid. How much damage? Four points of damage. Shouldn't it be eight? It's this eight points of crit. damage. Oh, it's eight points of damage. Isthen <laughs> gets another save. My God, just put him out of his misery. <laughs> It becomes such a dark Roll that story. save, man. Roll that save. Marty kills yeah. Istin right now. He- hey! hey! Kicking him in the knee, did it! 17. <laughs> he finally oh saves God. out. As the senses return to <laughs> Istin, his body covered with bruises, wounded from being beaten on by all of his new friends. What happened? What, is- what does Istin say? So... He groggily comes out of it. His eyes start to focus again, and he looks at Ao, looks at Mag, looks at Trill, and says, Oh, what are you doing here? And we'll pick up from there next time. Trill kicks him in the knee again. <laughs> The 
Roots of Ruin is a Tabletop Gold production produced under the Paizo Incorporated Community Use Policy using trademarks and copyrights owned by Paizo that are covered under that policy. Paizo does not recognize, endorse, or sponsor this project in any way, and we are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. All original characters and content in the Roots of Ruin are the property of Tabletop Gold, and all rights are reserved. We at Tabletop Gold would love to hear from you. On our website, tabletopgold.com, you can learn more about us and our shows, pick up great merch, and connect to the best online community in all of podcasting. Thanks for listening.